This is Apollo Control, 43 hours, 29 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 11 presently uh, on a spot directly above or directly out from the Malay Peninsula. Some three hours, 30 minutes remaining in the scheduled 10 hour sleep period for the crew. And if the space digital display were up here at the time coming out of the computer, we would know what the distance and velocity were. So at 43 hours, 29 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. 44 hours, 28 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 11 crew has another 2 hours, 31 minutes remaining in their 10 hour sleep period. Spacecraft is now some 72,010 nautical miles out from the moon. Velocity continuing to decelerate as we get near the changeover point in influence between the Earth and the Moon. Velocity now showing 3,811 feet per second. Spacecraft now uh, calculated to weigh uh, 96,068 pounds. At uh, 44 hours, 29 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 45 hours, 28 minutes, ground elapsed time. A little more than an hour remaining in the Apollo 11 crew sleep period. Present uh, velocity, 3,799 feet per second. Distance from moon, 69,810 nautical miles. Apollo 11 will continue decelerating as it gets to the point where the moon sphere of influence overcomes the Earth's sphere of influence. This point will take place, or this event will take place at uh, 61 hours, 39 minutes, and 57 seconds ground elapsed time, according to the flight dynamics officer. At this point, the spacecraft to moon distance will be 33,822 nautical miles. Spacecraft to Earth distance, 186,437 nautical miles. The velocity will have slowed to a relative crawl at this point. Be uh, Earth referenced uh, 2,990 feet per second. Moon referenced 3,772 feet per second. Clock uh, counting down to lunar touchdown, which, as mentioned before, will likely be changed as the uh, spacecraft goes into lunar orbit and the data is refined and some of the times change a few seconds one way or the other. At any rate, the landing clock now showing 57 hours, 17 minutes until lunar landing. At 45 hours, 30 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 46 hours, 28 minutes, ground elapsed time. A little more than a half hour remaining in the crew sleep period. Members of the green team of flight controllers headed up by Prime Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth are coming into the control room at this time. And at each console, the handover is taking place from the uh, black watch. At the time, at the present time, the uh, Apollo 11 spacecraft is uh, 
67,518 nautical miles out from the moon, <laughs> traveling at a velocity of uh, 3,700 or 3,787 feet per second. Apollo 11 presently is being tracked by the Madrid S-band station. And at 46 hours, 29 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 46 hours, 58 minutes into the mission. The green team, led by Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth, has just relieved Glenn Lunny's black team. The flight surgeon, uh, Dr. Willard Hawkins, indicates the uh, crew appears to be still asleep. We're nearing the end of the scheduled rest period. Cliff Charlesworth indicates we will put in a call to the crew uh, within a few minutes. Apollo 11 is 158,681 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,578 feet per second. Spacecraft weight is 96,068 pounds. This Apollo Control at 47 hours, three minutes. Cliff Charlesworth has decided to let the crew sleep a little longer. He's just had a conversation with the flight surgeon. Dr. Hawkins reports all indications are that the crew is sleeping soundly. The uh, flight plan uh, does not warrant awaking them uh, just to get them up. There is no... Uh, Nothing in the flight plan that requires their attention at the present time. So the flight director has made a decision to uh, not put in a call to the crew and uh, wake them. Flight surgeon uh, says that a look at the data throughout the night indicates that the crew slept uh, rather well all night. This is Apollo Control at 47 hours, 41 minutes into the mission. From all indications, the crew is still asleep. We're uh, 41 minutes past the end of the scheduled 10-hour rest period now. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth has decided to uh, let the crew uh, remain asleep, not awaken them from the ground. There's no need to awaken them. Nothing scheduled in the flight plan that requires their attention at this time. Apollo 11 is 160,137 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity, 3,544 feet per second. This is Apollo Control at 48 hours into the Apollo 11 mission. Spacecraft is 160,760 nautical miles from Earth. The distance from the moon is 64,115 nautical miles. Earth referenced velocity 3,529 feet per second. The rest period has now lasted an hour longer than uh, the 10-hour period scheduled. It's extended to 11 hours now. 
flight surgeon says there are indications that uh, the commander Neil Armstrong may be awakening some stirring around however we have not yet put in a call to uh, the crew the mid-course correction three was scheduled uh, this afternoon at an elapsed time of 53 hours 54 minutes has been canceled the velocity value for that mid-course is uh, only eight-tenths of a foot per second so we will not uh, not do mid-course correction number three we'll continue to stand by uh, for either a call from the ground or a call from the spacecraft This is Apollo Control at 48 hours, 9 minutes. We've just put in a call to the crew. Here's that conversation. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston, over. Good morning, Houston, Apollo 11. Hey, good morning, Apollo 11. Nice to be getting around to the... How's everything left up here? Figuring up. Uh, Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, Roger, say again, please. Roger, how do we learn this? Roger, they're looking great, and as far as we can tell, they're... As far as we can tell, everything is uh, good from down here, over. I just like the attitude held up uh, real well to our feet. Uh, yes, it did. We were showing uh, you remaining well within a uh, circle of 10 degrees radius uh, throughout the night. Seems to be working beautifully. Well, the old green team this morning. Did you have a quiet night? Yeah, it was a very quiet night. Uh, down here, uh, the old black team was uh, complaining they didn't get a chance to make any transmissions. Ron Evans is getting well, to be known. Well, we'll be seeing him tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, Ron's getting to be known as the silent Capcom. That's the best kind, Bruce. <laughs> okay. At the... Uh, a couple of small items in the way of a flight plan update and your morning consumables update. Over. Oh, uh, Roger 11. Uh, we'd like to perform a wastewater dump uh, at your convenience uh, sometime in the near future here. No particular time scheduled. Uh, down here at uh, the time for mid-course correction three, which is about uh, 53.55, uh, we're deleting mid-course correction number three and all the items uh, associated with it. For your information, the calculated value of the burn for mid-course number three was eight-tenths of a foot per second. That is 0 0.8 feet per second. Uh, canceling this, if we decide to burn mid-course correction 4, uh, this would then give you a burn for mid-course correction 4 of 2.0 feet per second. At uh, 53 hours, we have uh, an IMU real line P52. Uh, we're requesting that you do this while in PTC, and we plan to continue PTC throughout the day. Over. We'll get to the, uh, uh, say again, please, you're cutting out.
minus five decimal zero percent, minus two pounds hydrogen, plus one pound oxygen. And that minus 5.5% uh, on the RCS total corresponds to minus six, six pounds. Over. Okay, I copy those, and uh, I'll give you our percentages now. Uh, Alpha 82, Bravo 84, Coca 85, Delta 87. Over. Uh, this is Houston. We copy your percentages, and do you have a crew status report on sleep for us? Armstrong 8, Collins 9, Aldrin 8. Hi, Houston, we're getting some cryo pressure out warning now in the middle of stirring uh, up the pot. Roger, we copy. This is Apollo Control. The flight surgeon reports that is not a record for sleep. The Apollo 10 crew during one rest period logged 10 hours of sleep. seems to have quieted down now. I guess that uh, we've rotated a new antenna into view and uh, probably also the earth out of view in your window. Over. Okay. It looks as though the uh, length of the shadow of that cloud is about the same as the width of the Persian Gulf. Okay, we copy width of the Persian Gulf. And I guess that all I can give you first hand is a, a single isolated data point, and that is that it was clear here in Houston this morning, but uh, that's a pretty localized observation. Uh, as a result of your waste water dump, it looks like the 
PTC mode has been disturbed somewhat. Uh, we're showing you about uh, 20 degrees out in pitch right now and about uh, 6 degrees in yaw, which is uh, significantly greater, about uh, twice as much, a little more than twice as much as the uh, deviation you had uh, prior to the wastewater dump. Uh, we're watching it down here, though, and uh, we'll let you know if we think any corrective action is required. Over. Okay, maybe we ought to next time split that in, uh, in half and do half of it on one side and half on the other, something like that. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Uh, we were actually pretty interested in seeing what the uh, effect on PTC would be of the wastewater dump. Uh, we don't recall ever having performed a PTC on Roger. Hi, uh, Apollo 11. I'm looking at that uh, cloud now. It's uh, around Pakistan uh, through the section. And it appears to be uh, one single cell that's uh, in the latter stage of uh, development. There's a smaller, more isolated one. Just to the Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, we lost you down in the noise on the comm mic here. Uh, about the time you were describing the single cell uh, cloud formation over Afghanistan, Pakistan area through the section. Over. Right, it uh, came through a lot clearer uh, through the section than with the uh, monocular, and uh, you could definitely tell it was a uh, one single cell in the uh, latter stages of development. It must have gone up to uh, over 50,000 feet, though. Uh, the eastern Mediterranean is uh, phenomenally clear. You can see all the uh, lakes, the uh, Dead Sea, uh, it out quite well. Uh, Roger, what appears to be the limit of resolution through that uh, sextant from your current position? Over. Well, I can't see it right now. It's outside the field of view. Roger. And uh, I don't know how you'd uh, really describe the limit of resolution. I'll think about that a little. Okay, I guess the, the smallest object that you could pick out looking through it would give us a pretty good hack. Well, you can see the Nile River going uh, almost up to its source. Uh, the, uh, the lake is uh, obscured by clouds. So you can trace it all the way on up. Roger. I guess that's down, though, isn't it? Uh, Apollo 11, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, we've been working under the assumption that uh, it would take about an hour for the uh, interference from a wastewater dump to dissipate to the point where uh, you could reasonably take uh, star sightings for platform alignment, navigation, or something of this sort. Uh, if you have a, a spare minute or two, could you comment on the observation conditions now? Over. Yeah, stand by one, Bruce. Okay. My guess would be the telescope is probably pretty useless, but uh, you can differentiate in the section between uh, water droplets and stars by uh, by the uh, difference in their motion. Uh, okay, Mike, and I guess that we've still got, uh, what you're saying is we've still got a lot of water droplets visible, but you could pick them out and distinguish in the section there. Right, I think so, but Buzz is looking through it now, just a second. Oh, okay. Uh, you sent a phone call, it looks like at this time uh, the section would be quite usable for uh, any alignment. Uh, there's actually very few uh, small particles that are by. Uh, Roger, Buzz. How about the uh, telescope? Is it useful now? Well, it's not quite as useful. Uh, it never seems to be, uh, depending on the position of the sun, it's got that uh, band that seems to go to the center. Uh, I don't think it's because of the uh, wastewater particles that uh, it would uh, like its uh, effectiveness of it. Uh, Roger, what? Is this band uh, something that's deposited on the outside of the optics, or? No, it's just a reflection uh, uh, from the sun. 
Roger. Roger. Sun bounces off the lamp structure, but the web attached to that telescope is just about uh, useless. Those uh, star charts that MPAT provided us, I think, would be most useful if we had to use the, uh, for some reason, we had to mark through the telescope. We could use those as a guide uh, for what we're looking at and, uh, and uh, say, well, that bright blob over there has got to be that star because that's the position we're in. But uh, so far, we've been, or at least I've been unable to pick out any decent star patterns while docked with the lamb using the telescope. This is Houston, we copy. No. This is Apollo Control at 49 hours, 7 minutes into the mission. Apollo 11 is 163,040 miles from Earth. Velocity 3,476 feet per second. accumulator stroking, we were uh, on low bitrate data and consequently not receiving the O2 flow parameter. Uh, we expect that uh, what you're seeing is uh, probably nominal. Uh, that is probably what we would expect uh, from a transducer that's uh, malfunctioning in this fashion. It's probably just going to uh, keep on getting uh, worse like that. Uh, nothing to worry about. We'll monitor things on the ground here. Over. Okay, it does look like it's gradually degrading to uh, about Zilch. Roger, we copy. This is Apollo Control at 49 hours 52 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from Earth is 164,558 nautical miles. Its velocity is 3,441 feet per second. This is Apollo Control at 50 hours 16 minutes. Apollo 11 is now 165 miles, 165,346 nautical miles from Earth. Traveling at a velocity of 3,423 feet per second. Flight controllers report all systems well within the normal range and operating very satisfactorily. This Apollo Control at 50 hours 40 minutes. Apollo 11 is 166,135 miles from Earth. Capcom is going to take a radio check here, I think, with the crew. Apollo 11 CDR, this is Houston, radio check, over. Uh, Roger, Houston, CDR loud and clear. Uh, Roger, we're reading you the same, out. And uh, would you check with FAO and see uh, where that errata sheet is? We uh, haven't been able to locate that. Roger, I understand it's supposed to be the back page in uh, Buzz's operations checklist. Okay. FAO is the flight activities officer. Apollo 11's velocity is 3,404 feet per second. The spacecraft's still in the passive thermal control mode rotating at three-tenths of a degree per second, or uh, three revolutions per hour. Uh, 
sporadic bursts of static that you hear uh, on the air ground is caused by the uh, rotation of the spacecraft, the changing the orientation of the antennas as the uh, spacecraft slowly rotates to maintain thermal balance. The backup lunar module pilot Fred Hayes is at the Capcom console with uh, Bruce McCandless. That radio check was with the Apollo 11 commander, Neil Armstrong. This is Apollo Control at 50 hours, 53 minutes into the mission. An important news release will be available in the Apollo News Center at 11.45 Central Daylight Time this morning. At noon, Colonel Frank Borman will be in the Building One Auditorium at MSC for a briefing concerning the news release. Repeating, an important news release will be available at 11.45 a.m. Central Daylight Time in the Apollo News Center at MSC. This Apollo Control at 51 hours 7 minutes, Apollo, 7, Apollo 11's distance is 167,007 nautical miles from Earth, velocity 3,386 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Did you find it? Over. Roger, we found it. Roger. And uh, see you're in Pooh. If you can give us accept, we'll uh, uplink a new state vector to you and uh, update the CMC clock. Over. Okay, you got it. Roger. 11, this is uh, Houston. Uh, we're through with the uplink. You can go back to block. Roger, back to block. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, we would like to terminate the charge on battery B at GET of 5130. Over. Apollo 11, this is Houston. We'd like to terminate charging battery Bravo at uh, 5130 GET. Over. Roger, terminate charging battery Bravo 5130. Roger, out. This is Apollo Control at 51 hours 25 minutes into the mission. Apollo 11 is 167,594 nautical miles from Earth, moving toward the moon at a velocity of 3,373 feet per second. All systems are normal. We will be utilizing this release line for the Colonel Frank Borman briefing. During that briefing, we will tape any air-to-ground transmissions and play them back after the briefing. This is Mission Control Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think all of you have the uh, statement about Luna 15 and Frank... No sound? All right. Is there any sound here? Okay. I think you all have the, uh, the statement on Luna 15 and Colonel Frank Borman's here just to answer any questions, and Chris Kraft, the director of flight crew operations, is making his way uh, in case you have some other questions about trajectories. So uh, no further ado, uh, we're open for questions. Rudy? Wait for the mic. I'm expecting you to do the talk. Colonel Borman, did uh, did you ask, or did they give you any indication of what the mission of Luna 15 is? They said that. <laughs> that was a real burp. They said that uh, 
it would remain in orbit, in this present orbit, for two days and that uh, they would notify us immediately of any, any future changes in the trajectory. They also said that at no time would the Lunar 15 trajectory intersect the published trajectory of Apollo 11. Al? They say uh, the length of the two days, in other words, from when were they counting when they said two days? 1300, uh, 17 July, Moscow time. Uh, Frank, for audio purposes, would you briefly repeat what the press release says? The, the press release briefly says that Mr. Kraft, Dr. Kraft, excuse me, called me and said, uh, we're a little bit interested in what Luna 15 is doing, and uh, could you check with some of the people that you met in the Soviet Union recently and see if you can find out? So I, uh, after checking with the appropriate people, called, placed a call to the uh, Soviet Union and talked to uh, Dr. Keldish, and at, or to his assistant who speaks English, and asked them if they could relay us any information and explain the, uh, that some, there was some interest, more than casual interest in it, on the part of the flight operations people here in Houston. And they responded with a uh, cable that I received at home last night that uh, gave the uh, orbital parameters plus the uh, indication that we just mentioned that they would inform us of any further changes. Hello, Simons. Uh, could either one of you tell us how you interpret what you've just told us, that it will remain in present orbit two days? Oh, that would be conjecture. So uh, your guess is as good as ours at this point. I'm, a, I'm an honorary doctor. <laughs> if you're a doctor, I'd better move over a couple of years. <laughs> I repeat. We, we could, uh, I'm sure Frank and uh, myself would probably, probably come up with the same answer. Uh, we can only guesstimate what the Russians are doing in this instance. Uh, and um, we've said to each other that probably we would guess they were doing a step-by-step -step program just as we would do a step-by-step -step program in this country. And they've been flying uh, circumlunar flights with their lunar vehicles. And this flight is a lunar orbit flight in which they'll return from lunar orbit. And, uh, that's, it's a step in their lunar exploration program. Harry, please. Uh, can you translate these orbital parameters for us into an altitude, uh, uh, an apogee and perigee, and tell us where this w is with respect to the projected Apollo 11 trajectory? Well, the eccentricity is pretty low, and the uh, period is about the same as ours, two, two hours. Uh, we, we compute that to be 72 by uh, 156 and an inclination of about 45 degrees. 72 by 156 and an inclination of about 45 degrees. 72 at perigee and 156 at apogee. Nautical miles, yes, I'm sorry. F, F Clark. And you multiply and that by 1.82 something to get kilometers. <laughs> Can you tell us why you held up the announcement this long? Pardon me? If, if you got this information last night or early this morning, well, we got why the, did you hold I up didn't, I didn't, uh, quite frankly, I didn't see any, I thought there wouldn't be any more news last night than it was this morning. And we... Uh, Put it out. I, I was at home. Fact, uh, he, didn't, he didn't talk to me until this morning. I didn't tell Chris about it till this morning. The, after all, the important thing is here that it isn't going to bother Apollo 11. So. F. Clark. Uh, Chris, could we clarify uh, what you said when you you said a step-by-step -step program, and you said it was in lunar orbit? Now, did you say that you expect expected it to leave lunar orbit? Hart Hill. That would, be my, that would be my guess, yes. To return to Earth? Affirmative. Uh, does that tell you any more about the mission? Yeah, it says it's a lunar orbit mission. 
But you're a doctor. I'm not trying to be smart with you. That's all. I'm just guessing, and I think you would guess the same way, that uh, the the Russian programs uh, traditionally have been very methodical in in stepping through the various phases of an operation, uh, unmanned, et cetera, before they do manned and they do certain. This is Apollo Control at 51 hours 58 minutes into the mission. Apollo 11 is 168,658 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 3,349 feet per second. We have 30 seconds of air ground uh, conversation taped during uh, the news briefing. We'll play that for you now. 11, this is Houston. Will we show you terminating battery B charge? Over. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Over. Right, Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, Roger, 11. We show you terminating battery B charge at about uh, 51 hours, 30 minutes. Over. Okay. Roger out. This is Houston. Uh, say again, both what on? Over. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Affirmative, we request uh, hydrogen and an oxygen fuel cell purge. Over. Okay, any preference switch first? Uh, negative. Uh, as long as You know, we have a holiday. Well, can I get it now? No. Wait a minute. You can't give it. She can get it for you Monday, and I will go over there and get it Monday. What time do you need it and where? Hello? Yeah, I don't know where. Well, where are you? Well, I, I've got to get it to, uh, to Friendswood. You've got to get it to Friendswood? Yeah, and I'm not sure when I'll be going home. Oh, my. Well, let me call over there and see if they have a holiday. If so, I could probably get it this afternoon. Can you call back in about an hour? Or can I call you? No? Huh? Well, uh, where is over there? Uh, DAV Corporation in Clear Lake City. Okay, well, they had me down for that Apollo 8 movie also. I was just going to go by there and get it this afternoon. What time do you get off work? Well, I'm going to leave right now for a while and come back uh, later on. Uh, about four o'clock. Uh, well, let me call right now. I'll be here for a couple of hours, so I could either get it, uh, pick it up uh, later on this afternoon, or, or else just get it on my way. I'm going home to eat lunch, so I could, I could get it on my way home. Well, listen, I've got to call over there and see if they're going to get the day off. She didn't know yesterday what they were or not. Can I call you back there in just a few minutes? Yeah, let me call you. Okay, about five minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Recovery Marine flight on your loop. Flight GMB. Go Following uh, recovery marine flight on your loop. Maroon flight recovery. Hey, what time zone is Moscow in? Say again. What time zone is Moscow in? Tell me how to get to Zulu from Moscow. Okay, just a minute.
stand by. We're trying to find the okay, map. Okay, is now. it much as much of a problem to find out? No, it's right on the other side of this post. Oh, okay, that's pretty close. It's Zulu plus three. That's right, should do it. As you're going east so 1,300 miles cow would be 1,000 Zulu. You mean right now? No, not, not, okay. right, not right now. Are you referring back to what Borman, what time yeah. he got his? Uh, I believe they said that was 1,300 Moscow time, didn't they? Yeah, but that's three hours to Zulu, right? right. Plus three so, hours. So okay. that would be 1,000. Uh, right, I think it would. 1,000 Z. Okay. Thank you. Recovery, right. Osborne, your loop. Flight control, I was ran still. Hey, this is Milton again. Milton, I'm still waiting for a call. I called her and told her that you'd like to pick it up today, and I think it'll probably be possible, but she hasn't called me. She said she had to put in a long-distance call to somebody. I told her that you were, are you coming back on shift at 4 o'clock? Are you coming back here around, over here about 4? What was it you said to me a while ago? You're going home? I'm going home and coming back. Okay, well why don't you call me when you come back then? All right. Okay? No, nothing exciting. Do you need anything? Okay, well I feel sure we'll get it, and if not, I'll get it um, somehow Monday and take it to Friendswood, wherever you need to get it. Uh, okay. They want it to well, show on Monday, is that right? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, we'll take care of it one way or the other, but give me a call when you get back. Okay, well, I can come over there. Uh, I can come by and get on my way back over here. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, bye. This is Apollo Control at 52 hours, 40 minutes. Apollo 11 is 170,010 mile, nautical miles from Earth. Velocity... 3,319 feet per second. Houston, Apollo 11, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, go ahead. Roger, you copy my now 93. That's affirmative, we've got it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and correct and uh, triangle difference is 0 0.01, but it's uh, sort of difficult at three tenths rate. I'm uh, required to use medium speed and resolved, and it's uh, difficult to hold the star uh, centered long enough to get a decent mark on it. Roger, we copy, and uh, they look okay to us. Right. This is Apollo Control at 53 hours, 3 minutes into the mission. Apollo 11 is 170,746 nautical no miles from Earth. Velocity 3,303 feet per second. Crew is now in the process of realigning the spacecraft's inertial platform. This is Apollo Control at 53 hours, 20 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from Earth is 171,293 nautical miles, traveling at a velocity of 3,291 feet per second. The spacecraft weight is 96,068 pounds. This is Apollo Control. We have a correction on the orbital parameters of Luna 15 as given in the uh, news briefing uh, recently over. The parameters given in that briefing of 72 by 156 nautical miles were 
were based on a on computations from an orbital period of two hours and thirty minutes instead of the correct two hours and thirty seconds. The orbit has been recomputed based on the proper numbers and the parameters for Luna 15 based on a period of two hours thirty seconds are thirty by 110 nautical miles. Paraloon of 30, Apolloon of 110 nautical miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, I've got the morning news here if you're interested, over. Yeah, we sure are. We're ready to copy and comment. Is that 2.30 there? Uh, roger. Okay, go oh. Okay, here we go. The interest in the flight of Apollo 11 continues at a high level, but a competing interest in the Houston area is the easing of watering rules. Mayor Louis Welch promises a lifting of lawn watering restrictions if the rains continue. Friday is partly cloudy and there is a 30% chance of thunder showers in the afternoon. In Washington, D.C., the Senate Finance Committee approved extension of the income tax surtax, but a Senate vote on the you bill... You cut out, Houston. You cut out. Uh, Roger, where do you hold me cutting out? Over. Houston, Apollo 11. Apollo 11, Houston, over. Houston, how do you read now? Over. Not clear. Go ahead. All right. After the uh, rains in Houston. Roger. In Washington, the Senate Finance Committee has approved extension of the income tax surtax, but a Senate vote on the bill currently seems remote. In Austin, State Representative Ray Lemon of Houston has been nominated as a national director of the American Society for Oceanography. Lemon has proposed a study of the possibility of establishing an institute of oceanography in Texas. This would be the first such institute on the western Gulf of Mexico. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Weather Bureau, after recapping today's weather, showing a high of 88 and a low of 72, has noted snowfall none. From St. Petersburg, Florida, comes a radio report from the Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl, which said that the crew of his papyrus boat, the Ra, will sail into Bridgetown, Barbados, despite damage from heavy seas. The crew, however, will sleep on an escort vessel. Norman Baker, navigator of the expedition, said the crew was aboard the Ra today, repairing damage from storms this past week, which split the footing of the mast. Part of the broken mass was jettisoned overboard, and the vessel was 725 miles east of the Barbados. It is possible but uncomfortable to sleep aboard the raw, Baker said in the radio report. But the purpose of our voyage is not a test of strength or human endurance. That is the reason why the crew was spending nights aboard the escort vessel Shenandoah, which rendezvoused with the raw on Tuesday. In sports, the Houston Oilers are showing plenty of enthusiasm in their early preseason workouts at Kerrville, and Coach Wally Lamb says he is impressed with the fine group of rookies. National League Baseball, uh, yesterday, Thursday, St. Louis 11, Philadelphia 3, Montreal 5 over Pittsburgh 4, Atlanta 12, Cincinnati 2, San Francisco 14, and Los Angeles 13. American League have uh, Baltimore 3 over Cleveland 2, Detroit 4 to Washington 3, Minnesota 8 to Chicago 5, uh, Boston and New York was rained out. And in Corby, England, an Irishman, John Coyle, has won the World Porridge Eating Championship by consuming 23 bowls of instant oatmeal in a 10-minute time limit from a field of 35 other competitors. Over.
Now, Roger, I assume uh, Houston didn't play yesterday. Uh, that's correct. I'd like to enter Aldrin in the oatmeal eating contest next time. Be pretty good at that. He's joining Sarah up here. Let's see, you all just uh, finished a meal not long ago, too, didn't you? I'm still eating. Okay, does that, uh, that, uh... He's on his, ninth, he's on his 19th bowl. <laughs> Roger. Are you having any difficulties with uh, gas in the food bags like the 10 crew reported? Well, that's intermittently affirmative, Bruce. We have these uh, two hydrogen filters, uh, which work fine as long as you don't hook them up to a food bag. But the entryway into the food bag has enough back pressure to cause uh, the filters to start losing their efficiency. Uh, a couple of times I've been tempted to go through that dry-out procedure, but we found that uh, simply by leaving the filters alone for a couple of hours, uh, their efficiency uh, seems to be restored. Roger, we copy. Now, efficiency ranges everywhere from uh, darn near perfect to uh, terrible, just depending on the individual characteristics of the uh, food bag we're uh, putting to them. Some of the food bags are so crimped near the entryway that there's no way we can uh, work them loose to prevent back pressure. Roger. That's Mike Collins from the spacecraft. This is Apollo Control at 54 hours, 6 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from Earth now is 172,748 nautical miles, traveling at a velocity of 3,260 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Copy. 
Go ahead, ready to copy. Okay, we recommend uh, stopping PTC at GET of 544500, and this should put you at just about the right roll angle. Uh, the attitude we recommend is roll 263, pitch 090, yaw 000. Uh, this gives you the earth out of window number one in the command module and places the high gain antenna uh, and the CSM window for TV uh, at your convenience. Uh, you will also have the sun shining in uh, or shining at the hatch on the limb and if you take down the window shade you should get some sunlight in. Uh, we're recommending wide dead band. Over. Houston, you read over. Houston, Apollo 11, over. Roger, 11, do you read me over? Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Stand by, Charlie. Uh, we're going to come out of PTC here at uh, 263 roll and then do a burp 49 uh, to the uh, recommended attitude. That sounds fine to us. Over. This is Apollo Control at 54 hours 45 minutes. Apollo 11 is 173,997 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,000. 234 feet per second. In the control center, uh, the white team led by Gene Kranz is preparing to relieve Cliff Charlesworth and the green team. Capcom is uh, Charlie Duke. We're estimating the change of shift news conference for 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Apollo 11, Houston, before you open the pressure equalization valve, we'd like a limb CM Delta P, over. Okay, uh, let me check it again. It was about 155. Five. Roger. I read it uh, 158 right now, Charlie. Roger, thank you much. How do you read? 
eight on the high game. Uh, Eleven, how do you read me over? Reading you loud and clear, Charlie. We just switched to the high gain and we stopped PTC at roll 263, pitch 90, yard zero. How do you read? Roger, Mike, you're five by now on the high gain. Uh, we right between the Omni antennas and pretty uh, horrible calm on the Omnis. We got you five by on the high gain and we copy the PTC stoppage. Over. Okay, fine. Houston, we're going to open the direct O2 valve and start pumping up the cabin. Roger, copy. Apollo 11, Houston, we're going to hand over to Goldstone for uplink in about two minutes. We might have a momentary dropout of comm. Over. All righty. Can you hear our master alarm in the background? That's O2 flow high coming through this amplifier. Roger, copy. That photoelectric cell is a good device. It's worked very well. Uh, 11, Houston, say again, over. I say that photoelectric cell amplifier for the master alarm is a good device. It's working very well, and it's a nice, pleasing tone. All oh, right, copy. Thank you. Makes you almost glad to get master alarm. Houston Apollo 11, as a matter of curiosity, our O2 flow meter is pegged uh, full scale high. Roger 11, we copy that here, over. Okay. So that transducer is working somewhat. Right. 11, Houston, we'd like to try to attempt to correlate your uh, O2 flow in transducer with the, uh, uh, the flow valve that you got open. How far, how far open would you say you have the uh, repress O2 over? Uh, correction to direct O2. Uh, stand by, Charlie. Okay, Charlie, it's not open very far. It's uh, hard to give you a good reading without shutting it again, but the arrow is about at the 1 o'clock position. Now, uh, I've reduced the flow, and I'll let it stabilize here. Right now, our onboard reading is about uh, 0.4, and that's with the uh, arrow on the O2 valve at the 2 o'clock position. Would you rather have uh, comparisons of O2 flow readings, or would you rather have valve position comparisons? Roger. Stand by. Uh, Ecom say, say they'd like to look at the uh, uh, valve positions, over. Okay, well, we're holding uh, steady now at three-tenths of a pound per hour, and our cabin pressure is uh, about five, four. And uh, I'll uh, close the valve momentarily and then open it again to this position and tell you how much travel is required. Roger. about 30 degrees of travel, Charlie, from the closed position, which is with the arrow pointing at about uh, 3 to 3.30, 4 o'clock. Roger. Our flow is stabilized now at uh, 0.6. Roger, we copy. We're reading the same. Okay. Yeah, old 
movement back to the one o'clock position. Right. Is that enough uh, different positions, or you want more, Charlie? Uh, Mike, that's a good, good enough. We are satisfied now. Over. Okay. Houston Apollo 11, we've uh, terminated Direct 02. Our cabin pressure is 57, and as a matter of curiosity, when we turn the Direct 02 valve off, we get a master alarm just like they did in the spacecraft testing. Roger. 11, Houston, we have a little update for you. When you go into the limb, we'd like you to unstow and bring back to the command module the following items. Over. Ready to copy. Roger. We'd like you to pick up the out of the flight data file the surface checklist, the mission rules no go card, the dip app. RCS limit Q card, over. Apollo 11 Houston, the reason we wanted you to bring those three items back, we'll have some updates uh, for you for those three, over. Roger, we figured you would. This is Apollo Control at uh, 55 hours, 10 minutes. Uh, our network controller has just advised that we are receiving live television at uh, Goldstone. Uh, we would presume this is a test of the system similar to what we received from the crew yesterday. Uh, the crew is planning to send television from the lunar module when they ingress. Uh, stand by, here's a call for, uh, to the crew. Quite configured here at Houston for the transmission. Uh, we'll be up in a couple of minutes, over. Uh, Roger, this is just for free. This isn't uh, what we had in mind. Roger. Well, that was Capcom Charlie Duke uh, advising the crew that we're not uh, quite prepared for television reception at this time. You heard Mike Collins respond that uh, this one's for free. Uh, we still intend to get the television transmission uh, during the time the crew is in the lunar module, beginning at about 56 hours, 20 minutes, uh, ground elapsed time, which would be about 4.52 p.m. Central Daylight Time. are getting a black and white television picture uh, in the uh, control center at this time. We should have that in color by now. Interior view of the command module looking up into the uh, LAM hatch, the CSM LAM hatch area. So we can't quite make out uh, which crewmen we're seeing up in the tunnel working with the uh, probe and drogue assembly.
Getting a very good view of the work going on in the uh, command and service module tunnel. Uh, that appears to be uh, Neil Armstrong working in the uh, in the tunnel, uh, operating, working on the uh, drogue and uh, probe assembly. This extremely sharp, clear picture is uh, coming to us from about 175,000 miles distance from Earth, uh, presently about 48,000 miles from the moon. appears uh, as if it might be all the uh, free TV, as Mike Collins put it, uh, forgetting we do, in, do expect to get uh, the television transmission from the time the crew is in the lunar module. And uh, that uh, period of activity is scheduled to begin at about 56 hours, 20 minutes with the uh, ingress to the lunar module. Now we are st starting to get a picture back again, losing lock momentarily, and now we have it back again. Neil Armstrong up in the tunnel at this point, removing the uh, probe and drogue assembly in preparation for the ingress to the lunar module. Network controller just reported that uh, this television is coming to us on the 210 foot dish antenna at Goldstone, California.
we just saw the uh, probe assembly uh, start to come loose now as Neil Armstrong is uh... Apollo 11 Houston, it's a pretty good show here, it looks like you almost got the probe out Yeah, it's moved now Roger, Neil's really good Not much light up in that area, but uh, apparently uh, he seems to have to pick it up. There are some bright spots uh, shining on the probe, uh, apparently sun shafting on it, that uh, just gives just about enough to, for us to make it out over. Hey, I, I think those are the tunnel lights. Oh, okay. You're right. Okay, it's moved now, coming down. Roger. Looks like it's a little bit easier than doing that in the chamber. Uh, but it goes where you direct it. 11 Houston, that's a beautiful picture now we've got. Uh, we're looking at a 12-second delay in, uh, to us. You're just bringing it down by the optics now. Mike must have done a smooth job in that dock, and uh, there isn't a dent or a mark on the probe. Roger. We're really getting a great picture here, 11 over. Eleven Houston, uh, with a 12-foot cable, we estimate you should have about five to six feet uh, excess when you get it, the camera into the limb. Over. Roger. Now uh, we can see the probe now. A correction to drove. Roger. Drug removal is coming next. Roger. As we suspected. Once removal of the drug is completed, they will have access to the uh, LAM hatch and be able to go into the tunnel. Eleven Houston, that was a good view of the storage area under the couch.
11, Houston, looks like it's pretty crowded in there with that drogue, over. Oh, it's That's not really bad. This uh, TV cable is getting in the way. We see lots of arms. He doesn't really have a union card there. We can't really complain too much, I guess. This uh, unscheduled television transmission has now run about 18 minutes, and we have no estimate at this point as to how long it will continue. Uh, Mike, Mike Collins reported that it would, uh, we would go ahead with a regularly scheduled one when they are in the LEM. Apollo 11, Houston, do you have a little white dot in the bottom of your monitor, on TV monitor, over? Uh, Roger, we do. Roger, I guess part of the camera's uh, been burned out down there. These are really beautiful pictures now, Buzz, over. Real clear. Okay, we might have got just a little bit of sun in there. Is it just uh, one small white dot? That's primitive. view here of the computer uh, display and keyboard assembly with the green lights flashing. We went up in the uh, tunnel checking the roll angle, Charlie, and it's 2.05 degrees. Project copy 2.05 on the roll cal. And that's a plus. Roger, plus. to the roll cal or roll calibration index marker in the tunnel which shows how far off uh, exact uh, zero the uh, two vehicles were when the docking occurred. 11 Houston, the tunnel looks pretty clear to us. Somebody going up there now. Over. Uh, it's Mike uh, checking his uh, connectors up there now. Right. 11 Houston, the lighting up in there looks very good to us at this time, over. I think that's mostly the camera. It, uh, it's subdued to say the least. Roger, it's, uh, pretty, it's gathering pretty well to us. Uh, we see everything quite clearly up in there.
all the dock lanterns look good today, just like they did yesterday. Everything up in there looks just fine. That sounds fine to us, over. Mike Collins reporting there on the appearance of the docking latches. Houston, we can even read the decals up there on the limb hatch. Well, let me zoom it up and uh, see how much you can read. Okay. We can see the uh, the umbilical connection quite well there, but you see you're zooming in on one of the decals now that uh, to reset, unlatch handle, latch behind uh, grip and pull back two full strokes. That's about all we can make out. Hey, you got an A+. Plus. Thank you very much, sir. At least I passed my eye test. I'm standing six feet from it, Charlie, and you can read it better than I can. There's something wrong with the system. Roger. An interested uh, observer of these amazingly clear pictures coming to us from more than 175,000 miles out in space is astronaut Gene Cernan, who got a first-hand view of some of this uh, same area of the spacecraft during uh, his Apollo 10 flight. Good view of the uh, limb hatch handle there. 11 over. Roger. Looks like we'll be ready to uh, go into the limb early uh, if that's okay with y'all down there. Roger, it's fine with us, Neil. Go ahead anytime you wish. Over. In Houston, the white spot you see on your monitor, our TV people say it is a burn spot, but they expect it to dissipate after a couple hours. Over. Roger. Thank you.
Okay, the uh, dump valve is actuated. Roger, copy, 11. We see that very clearly. Is that uh, you, Buzz, with your hand on it? Yeah. Uh, Houston, we're really amazed at the quality of the picture up in the tunnel. It's uh, really superb, over. It is considering the amount of light up in there. Roger, we're about to open the hatch now. Right. There's that same guy that when you open up the door, why he's waiting there for you and he turns the lights on. How about that? It's like the refrigerator. That conversation between Charlie Duke and uh, Mike Collins referring to the automatic light that comes on in the uh, LEM when the hatch is opened. If I see uh, view in through your, by your right, left shoulder there, it's good. We can see the acid engine cover, the Velcro on it. And uh, that's about all we can make out right now. Uh, we see the helmet stowage. We don't see anything loose up there. Well, great. Looks good to us. We see a helmet stowage bag. Houston, we got a view of the cliff there off the right of our screen. halfway into the uh, LEM. Uh, this view is inside the LEM cabin. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, we'd like you to read out the LCG Reservoir uh, site level over. Okay, stand by. view of the window there. It uh, looks like the sun is apparently coming through uh, the shade. Yeah, I'm afraid it's, uh, we're just about uh, plus Z uh, right toward the sun. That's affirmative. This attitude put both windows uh, right towards the sun for the limb over. Well, I think you're good in some respects.
We had a view uh, buzz of the uh, utility light cord. Sir, if you've, uh... Now, let me show you a view looking the other way. Right. And we see uh, right now a uh, utility light or either a uh, floodlight uh, up there. I think now I see the uh, utility light still in the storage bag. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. I guess that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. We see you waving. Buzz Aldrin has apparently carried the camera into the limb with him, uh, showing us uh, Neil Armstrong and Mike Collins back in the CSM. 11 Houston, that's a really a beautiful shot. Uh, 11 Houston, we didn't quite decipher that signal that just came from the CMP. It uh, looks good. That's a uh, good reading for us. Over. Okay. We had a shot momentary a moment ago of the suit disconnect valve. Houston, that's a real good view. We have the AOT. Uh, you're back now, Buzz, and notice you're taking down one of the window shades, over. The light is superb. Yeah, how's the uh, sun coming in? How's the sun coming in from this direction going to uh, affect what you can see? It made it really super. Uh, the, the lighting is excellent in the, in the limb right now. We can uh, make out the AOT, the ISA, and uh, the left-hand uh, window uh, is a little glare off of that, but uh, the LMP side, the, the, with the shade down, it's really excellent. Over. Well, let's, uh, I'm turned around. I, uh, I took the shade off my side first. Roger, we copy. The light level for the TV is really excellent. Over. Yeah, the lighting in the lamp is very nice, not just like completely daily up, uh, and uh, everything is visible. Good bit lighter than the tunnel was earlier. Roger, we had a good view now, Neil, of the uh, DITA and also uh, buses uh, ACA. This uh, ingress to the lunar module came about uh, 40 minutes ahead of the flight plan, and we would presume that the unscheduled TV is perhaps merging with the scheduled a little bit a little bit early. Everything seems to be in place down there. Roger. We got the uh, dump valve uh, in view. Over. Uh, Roger. Dump valve in view.
Leveling Houston, we see you removing the ISA now, pulling it up, putting it up by the uh, AOT. The instrument panels are coming into view behind. Yeah, I think uh, it's probably be best if we've got an SPS burn to uh, put it back uh, over the instrument panel instead of putting it up over the uh, less than the recharge station. Would you care to comment on that one? We could do either, just as easily. Stand by. We'll have an answer for you momentarily. 11, Houston, it's really a super shot of the main display. this view, it's really, really great. Now you know how we feel. Okay, Neil's OPS is about 57, 5800. Copy. And mine's about 5800 also. Copy. Aldrin's hand uh, resting on one of the portable life support systems which will be used on the moon's surface. Eleven Houston, that's a good shot of uh, Neil's cliff there. Over. Uh, that's mine. Houston, that moment, a moment ago, we had a good shot of uh, your Pliss bus and the two helmet storage bags. And now behind your uh, left shoulder bus, we have the, the Dusky and the ACA. We're not quite sure who's holding the camera at this point. Uh, apparently, it's uh, drifting freely inside the cabin. likely attached to some convenient point uh, within the LEM cabin. This television transmission has now been running about 42 minutes. 
Uh, spacecraft now about 176,000 miles from Earth. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, buzz that a parachute to uh, attempting to put on the sun filter and uh, viewing the sun through the AOT, over. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it looks like it's down a little bit uh, more towards Los Angeles than I can be able to see in the AOT. Roger. Well, I got a beautiful view of the uh, side of the command module out of the AOT looking in the uh, left rear detent. Right. I can see the hatch and all the uh, all the EVA handrails. First time we've seen the uh, silvery outside of the command module. I can read the letters on the uh, hatch cover that say uh, boost cover uh, release and the big yellow arrow that points toward the uh, uh, opening uh, place where the tool B goes. Right. Great shot now, back down into the... And left on the... Go ahead, Buzz, over. Say again. I just saying we got a great shot looking back into the command module. Okay. Yeah, on the left detent, I can see the uh, AO, uh, the uh, rendezvous radar. And when I move to the forward detent, that's about all I've got. I look an eyeball to eyeball. Right. Neil Armstrong has apparently been holding the camera, uh, looking back down through the tunnel, and it, it appears now that he's handed the camera to uh, Buzz Aldrin. Uh, this view still looking back through the tunnel. We see Mike Collins in the background there. Houston, as far as the window shades go and the limb, there's nothing except for crew comfort. Uh, I don't think we got any systems problems. Be sure to put them back up when you egress. Over. All right, we will do.
Uh, Charlie, I'll give you a view out of the overhead window back uh, looking at the uh, command module uh, right-hand rendezvous window. Roger. Well, we see it now. Thanks a lot, Buzz. It's a good view through the overhead. One more run. One more going by the overhead. Right. There we go, we got it now. Uh, there wasn't very much uh, debris in the command module or the limb. We found very few uh, uh, loose particles of uh, bolts, nuts and screws and lint and things. Very few in each, uh, each spacecraft. They were very clean. Roger. Sounds good. Eleven Houston, we have a good view out of the rendezvous. Uh, correction, the overhead window of the limb, we don't see anybody staring back at us, though, over. Charlie, can you see uh, Mike two eyeballs here on Adams to the uh, rendezvous window? Eleven, Houston, stand by. We haven't picked him up yet. You're looking through a lot of layers of glass. Eleven Houston, uh, we had a we had a slight glimpse of uh, Mike in the rendezvous window at that time. It's pretty murky looking into there though. Okay, here he is. I've got him. I've got him on the monitor now. Okay, we see him staring back at us now. <laughs> Hello in there. Apollo 11, Houston, our recommendation for the ISA is to stow it back over the instrument panel, over. Right here, we'll do.
This transmission's been running about uh, 54 minutes at this point. Eleven Houston, we can make out the markings on the panel. We read system A, acid fuel, acid oxidizer, quad one, quad four. The it's really unbelievable the definition we're getting down here off that little camera over. We can even see the barber pole on the dog back. We can read the markings on the instruments uh, for the glycol pressure, quantity, PCO2. We can read the scale on the eight ball, over. Eleven Houston, we see the cross feed uh, barber pole, and we had the Velcro patches back up to the RCS systems. Now we can see the markings on the uh, uh, meters, uh, green and red bands in limits. See you raise the cover on the abort stage. We don't recommend that. Yeah, we're going to tape that one over. Right. We're going to tape that one over. We concur. The uh, restraints in here do a pretty good job of pulling my pants down. Roger. We haven't quite got that before the 50 million TV audience yet. Al Levin, you said that's a good view of the eight ball. We see that you can even read the off flag there. See the signal strength meter for the radar, read the numbers on it. had to uh, take the color down momentarily. We've run out of tape on the color conversion recorder. Uh, we estimate we'll have the black and white for about five minutes while the tape changes in process and then continue to convert uh, in color after that point. To uh, lamp power. Roger, stand by. We'll have an answer. Eleven Houston on that TV. Uh, our commentary, the monitor I was looking at was uh, delayed about 12 seconds, 12 to 15 seconds, while it went through our color converter. Uh, it was probably you thought I was crazy, but uh, we were looking at it 15 seconds after you broadcast it. Eleven Houston. No, we understood that, Charlie. Okay. Uh, on the limb cameras, so we'd like you to do it on LOI day with the limb power over. Okay, that's what we'll do. The black and white view that you're seeing now is the unconverted color picture as it uh, comes down from the spacecraft. Uh, the flicker, of course, is taken out in the conversion process. And we've now been uh, receiving television pictures from the cr spacecraft for about one hour. Uh, uh, check with stowage packet. Uh, it's got a 16-millimeter camera in it, and it's got this little cylinder, and. Uh, 
I guess, uh, I don't understand what it is. Maybe you can tell us. Roger, stand by. If we can't uh, figure it out either. It's got an arrow on the back and it says turn, but uh, I'm afraid to turn it. Uh, 11, your friendly geologist says it's the camera can crank excuse me, for the 16 uh, sequence camera if it jams. Over. Oh, very well. Thank you. Uh, the, the reference to the friendly geologist uh, refers to astronaut Jack Schmidt, who is here in the control center. There's that uh, word again, ancillary stowage container. Rod. And we're back with the color. Shades didn't quite hack it there, Buzz. Over. when you're in PTC, over. Okay, thank you. Houston, Neil, at this a attitude, you look like you're about 12 feet long. It seems like I always find myself upside down and whatever I'm doing around here. Houston, could you give us a few comments on your crew comfort with the 
CSM hoses uh, moving the air around over. Well, it's picking up a little bit of circulation in here. What do you estimate the temperature is, Buzz? Over. Oh, I'd say maybe uh, 73, 75. Right. It's uh, hard to tell uh, at this uh, density and uh, pressure of uh, gas, but the uh, comfort level is about the, about the same as the command module. It's a little warmer, stuffier when we first got in, but uh, it seems to be improving. Houston copies out. You may be able to see uh, some. Go ahead. Some, some particles jumping around on your screen. That's uh, just uh, dust particles that are being eliminated by sun shafting in the window. Roger, they're very clear now. Over. And that's a good view of uh, Neil's uh, correction of Buzz's uh, circuit breaker panel there. I can uh, just barely see the uh, handrail on the front porch from uh, the position on the uh, right-hand window. Roger. Eleven, Houston, our view of uh, the panel eleven uh, is uh, gets brighter than darker, or are you uh, changing the f-stop at all, over? Now what's happening is uh, we get pretty close to the window now and then, and it uh, drives the automatic light control uh, into the stop, I think. Uh, I think that's right. Yeah, I had to switch on outside while I was going through the uh, overhead window. That may uh, be what's contributing to some of it. Roger. Well, Evan Houston, we seem to be picking up a few bit more dust particles now. We see them quite clearly in the uh, screen now. Over. Yeah, I'm choking on one every so often. Okay. 
live in Houston. Uh, your show is going out to the U.S. now. We're about to get the satellite up. It'll be transmitted uh, to some other countries after that. Over. Roger. I'm uh, checking out this window bracket uh, where I'll be putting it for the uh, EVA uh, pictures of Neil going down the ladder. Roger. Paul 11, Houston, we keep marveling about the color and the clarity of the picture. Uh, it's really difficult to describe. It's, uh, it's just perfect. Over. Nine eleven doesn't look like you're having too much trouble with that bracket up there, Buzz. No, I tell you, those uh, new knobs really uh, make it easy to twist the thing and uh, get it uh, cinched down quite tight. Right. Houston, Buzz, how does the alignment look there? Looks pretty good as well as I can tell. Without the gear extended, I can't uh, uh, get a real definitive answer, but uh, you couldn't fix it to any place to see uh, much more out of the window without uh, hand-holding it for the whole time. Roger, it looks like to us it's going to work real well. Enough room to, uh, yeah, I think so. We see you putting your window guard in place there and uh, back up to the ISA now.
11, Houston, uh, Buzz, uh, you still looking for that 90 degree bracket, over? Yeah, he is looking for it now. All right, you will have a word for you in just a moment. My monitor shows a pretty good, uh, clear picture from this angle. Now we found the 90 degree bracket. Roger, Neil. Uh, it's uh, really a super picture. We've got the ACA, your ACA, the, the good picture of the throttle, the 90 degree bracket. We see the uh, start, uh, your handles, and uh, now over to the bracket. That's about the position uh, we'll be putting the camera in after the initial descent down the ladder. And it'll be taking one frame a second for uh, most of the EVA. Houston copies out. That's a real good view of that camera. Our monitor is a little bit wavy, so it's uh, hard for us to tell when we're when we've got a steady picture for you. Eleven, we have no complaints at all. We don't see that waviness on our picture. It's just really great. Over. Okay. Do the edges of the window look like straight lines to you? That's affirmative. Okay, they they don't in our monitor and. Uh, that leads us to make some uh, corrections to the camera, which probably aren't required sometimes. Eleven, we have no complaints at all. It's a magnificent picture. We've been receiving television now from the spacecraft for about an hour and 20 minutes. Apollo 11 presently 177,000 miles from Earth. What was that, Buzz, you're chasing now? That was, uh, that was me picking up some uh, particles of paint that were floating through the air in front of the camera there. Right, Neil, we got it. There's us at uh, Neil's about to check the Velcro map there. Okay, Buzz, we see the card up now. Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is where we uh, lock most of our data for each of the uh, land maneuvers. 
And uh, we have another card like this. It's the timeline book that uh, we placed down on the table in front of the uh, data and display keyboard. And it's on this timeline that we have all our procedures. Now we obviously uh, have to hold these in place in zero G, so we make use of the Velcro patches on the back and on the table. So we can attach these down here. And then we just turn the pages over when we go to new sequences in our uh, timeline of procedures. Roger. And we're ready to copy the DOI patch. Watch, we'll have the photos work that one up for you momentarily. Houston, that was a good shot of panel two. Now we got panel three in view with the temp monitor switch. The stabilization and control panel we see now with the mode control switches. Now over Eleven, that's real good uh, camera work. Probably the most unusual position a cameraman's ever hit, hanging by his toes uh, from a tunnel and taking the picture upside down. Roger, well, you're doing a super job. We got a uh, good view of the cross pointer there. Had a good view of the tape meter. Now the uh, floor of the cabin. I think you can see the uh, one of the two portable life support system uh, backpacks here in the center, and on each side we have the two uh, helmet visors. I'll remove one of them and show you uh, a little closer view of what this looks like. Roger. Inside the helmet visors are the EVA gloves with the blue tips. I'll not take those out now. Roger, Buzz, that's a great shot now that we're getting of the helmet, of the EVA visor, and also the, the uh, EVA gloves in the background. Okay, you did say this was going out now, didn't you? Stand by, I think so. Eleven, uh, you got a pretty big audience. It's live in the U.S., it's going live to Japan, Western Europe, and much of South America. Everybody reports very good color. Appreciate the great show. Roger, I understand. Thank you.
of your EVA uh, advisor assembly. Appreciate it. That's a good view of Mr. Collins down there. We finally see him again. Hello there, Ashley. Hello there. Eleven Houston, we noticed uh, when you were scanning over panel two a moment ago, one and two, the uh, two eight balls were slightly in disagreement. Uh, control said he'd like to uh, ag the line there. Yeah, one of them ags, one of them things. The problem is we don't know uh, whether the line eggs the pings or pings the eggs. Stand by. Eleven, Chris said he can tell you. What okay, cage above? Right. Like all home week, Charlie, to get back in the line again. But I can imagine. The uh, traverse from the bottom of the limb uh, to the uh, aft bulkhead of the command module must be about. Oh, 16, 20 feet. It's uh, not a disorienting one at all, but it's the most interesting to uh, contemplate just pushing off from one and uh, bounding on into the other vehicle all the way through the tunnel. Raj, must be some experience. Is Collins going to go in and look around? We're, we're willing to let him go, but he hasn't come up with the price of the ticket yet. Right. I'd uh, advise him to keep his hands off the switches. Yeah, if I can get him to keep your hands off my disc, it'll be a fair swap. Roger. That's why I've been eating so much today. I haven't had anything to do. He won't let me touch it anymore. Right.
It appears now that we have a view of Earth out the window. Eleven, Houston, if that's not the Earth, we're in trouble. That's the Earth, and we have a very good view of it today. There are a few more uh, cloud bands on than uh, yesterday when we beamed down to you, but uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful sight. And that description from Neil Armstrong. We have some horizontal banding in our TV monitor. Uh, are we transmitting that to you, or do you have a, a clear picture? Neil, we have a very clear picture. The only uh, thing that we see is a little white dot in the bottom of our screen, which uh, uh, is our TV guys say is a, an apparently a burned out spot in the camera, but it should come back over. Roger, uh, we have that in our monitor also. Eleven, Houston, we do have uh, three lines across our TV. I thought it was just a transmission problem, but uh, everybody's telling me now that it probably is it's on the downlink. Over. Now, those are the same three ones that uh, we have. Okay. How far out are we now, Charlie? Stand by, I'll give you an exact figure. You can notice the difference between yesterday and today. This is as large an image as we can give you. Right, it's distinctly smaller. Uh, you're now 177,000 miles out, over. Anything? That's uh, nautical miles. That's permanent. Eleven Not weeks. Long. Go ahead, over. Eleven Houston, we see the uh, still see the banding along the intertropical uh, convergence. Uh, I guess the most predominant one as around the up in the around the equator or slightly uh, north of the equator. Yeah, that's the way it looks, Charlie. Same as yesterday. Right. Just keep the Pacific Ocean nice and clear and calm on Flash Day. That's all we have. I'd like to say uh, hello to all uh, my fellow scouts and scatters at uh, Farragut State Park in Idaho. They have a national jamboree there this week, and Apollo 11 like to send them best wishes. Thank you, Apollo 11. I'm sure that uh, if they didn't hear that, uh, they will get the word uh, through the uh, news. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Houston, we have you, uh, your subspacecraft point is just off the western coast of South America, uh, directly south of, of about Mexico City, Owen. That's 
uh, that looks like what we observe from here. And uh, we're going to turn our TV monitor off now uh, for a short bit while we have some other work to do. Uh, it's Apollo 11 signing off. Roger, 11. Thank you very much. That was one of the greatest shows we've ever seen. We sure appreciate it. Over. This is Apollo Control. That uh, television transmission uh, lasted about uh, one hour, 36 minutes, according to our first rough calculation. Uh, during that period of time, the spacecraft traveled something over 2,000 nautical miles. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, could you give us an idea of uh, about how long it'll be before you start clo closing the limb back up? Over. Uh, we've got a little more work to do up there, uh, Charlie. We're going to make sure that we have everything transferred around and stowed the way we want to try to get a little bit ahead on tomorrow's timeline. I suppose that uh, we could be out of there in another uh, half hour or, or so if uh, it was necessary. Uh, Roger, Neil, we're not trying to push you. We're just trying to get an idea of, uh, about water dumps and uh, starting up the PTC again. Uh, take your sweet time, over. Okay, uh, we'd like to uh, get a flight plan update uh, from you for the next couple hours here uh, when you uh, think what uh, the various constraints might be and what you what order you might like us to do things. Roger, stand by. We'll have that to you in a moment. This is Apollo Control at uh, 56 hours, 51 minutes. Buzz Aldrin has now been in the lunar module for a little over an hour and uh, 13 minutes. Uh, we estimate that uh, Neil Armstrong has perhaps been in the uh, LEM uh, about 15 or 20 minutes less than that. Uh, due to the length of that television transmission, uh, the change of shift press conference has been canceled. The participants were unable to uh, wait for the, uh, the duration of the press conference uh, with other duties, and uh, the press conference has been canceled. At uh, 56 hours, 52 minutes, this is Apollo Control. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Uh, Mike, we'd like to go ahead and do a wastewater dump. Uh, we'd like you to dump it all the way down to zero. Over. Roger, we got that, Charlie. That didn't work, Charlie. Houston, left. 11, Houston, did you call over? Oh, Roger, just noticed that the uh, mass that the EVA light is on is charred uh, brown. Uh, it looks as though it took quite a beating uh, during launch. Oh, Roger. The EVA light still does work. Roger, we'll uh, let this, uh, the stand guys look at this and we'll be back with you with our, uh, what we think, over. Okay. 11, Houston, we were wondering, uh, Neil, with your closing comment on the TV that you were going to turn it off, it indicated you might be considering uh, turning it back on. We were wondering whether we want to keep the lines up, over. Well, we, we want your recommendation on that. I think uh, we would uh, just as soon uh, ourselves uh, terminate the TV, but if you have a commitment, uh, keep, uh, we'd be more than willing to turn it back on. Roger, stand by. Uh, Apollo 11, Houston, uh, we'd like to terminate the TV. Uh, we don't, we think we've got a really, <coughs> a good tape. Uh, that hour and a half show was superb. And we'd like to pick up TV, uh, correction, the PTC at about, uh, 58 hours, over. Roger. PTC at 58 hours. And we'll have the remaining 
Functions in the flight plan soon, over. Okay, fine. This is Apollo Control at 57 hours, 3 minutes. The decision, as you heard, relayed up to the crew there that we would go into the passive thermal control mode with the spacecraft in a slow roll uh, at 58 hours in the flight plan uh, would rule out further television uh, for today. I would also like to repeat that the change of shift press conference uh, for the previous shift was canceled due to the length of that uh, television transmission. And we do expect uh, to have a change of shift briefing following this shift, uh, probably between 11.30 and 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 178,236 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity has dropped down now to 3,146 feet per second. At 57 hours, 4 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, our recommendations on the activities for the next hour or so as far as flight plan goes are continue your limb familiarization as desired until about 58 hours, then ingress to the CSM, close the hatch, and establish PTC shortly thereafter, over. And Apollo 11, Houston, terminate okay. the water dump, over. Okay, water dump being terminated now. Houston, Apollo 11. 11, Houston, go ahead. Hunter Houston, I'd like to do a P-52 option 3 and tweak the platform up prior to uh, starting the PTC, over. Uh, Roger, uh, 11, stand by. Uh, 11 Houston, that sounds like a good idea to us. Go ahead. Okay, the platform's looking pretty good to me. Looks like the uh, worst axis drift is 0.01 something degrees per hour. Is that about what you figure? Uh, 11 uh, Roger, we've had reports all the marks have been good all the, uh, the last uh, couple uh, times you've run them. Uh, just a moment, I'll get you some information on the apparent uh, drift rates. Okay, Owen, thank you. They got the maroons on? Uh, say again, 11. I say you got the maroons on now? Uh, not uh, permanently here, Mike. Uh, we just have a uh, standby here while uh, Charlie's out checking how to use that special tool on a camera. Uh, the uh, maroon team will be on tomorrow. Okay, nice to hear your voice. How's everything going? Everything's going smoothly here. We sure enjoyed the show this afternoon, Mike. Okay. Uh, 11 uh, Houston, uh, we suggest you go ahead and do the P-52 first, and uh, we'll take a look at the angles and give you some uh, new drift rates after taking a look at them. Over. All right, fair enough. Apollo 11 Houston, over. Go ahead, 11 here. Uh, 11 Houston, a uh, little information to you there, CDR. We've all taken a momentary uh, brief respite from our work here to have some special, uh, have a bite of special uh, moon cheese that has, I understand, has been sent to us directly from uh, Wapakoneska. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Your own hometown. Over. Uh, we, can't, we can't pronounce it either. I think you'll enjoy that, so you make them. Fine brand of cheese. Uh, Roger there, and I'll polish up the grammar for the next trip. <laughs> Houston 11, uh, you're looking at the noun 93, and I'll proceed when uh, you copy them. Uh, 11 Houston, uh, we've got them. Okay. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, we'd like to poo and accept. We have a Delta H update for you, over. All right, Charlie, stand by one. Houston, Apollo 11, poo and accept. 
Roger. Apollo 11, Houston, we got the load in. The computer's yours, over. Houston, Roger. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, we'd like you to stir up the crowds now, over. Houston, Apollo 11, Roger. This is Apollo Control at 57 hours, 44 minutes. We've had no further reports uh, from the crew to indicate whether or not uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have returned to the command module. And I guess that would answer our question. Neil Armstrong uh, reporting that they're finished with their work in the LEM will be uh, coming out shortly. Apollo uh, 11 is now 179,490 nautical miles from Earth, uh, traveling at a speed of 3,121 feet per second. And a little less than three hours, uh, we'll pass a milestone of sorts as the spacecraft passes into the lunar sphere of influence. Uh, and what we mean by that is that at that point, the uh, spacecraft will be under the dominant influence of the moon's gravity. The moon's gravitational force will have uh, the predominant effect on the trajectory of the spacecraft. And at that point, our displays in mission control monitoring velocity and uh, altitude will switch from Earth reference to moon reference. We'll then begin uh, monitoring the progress of the spacecraft as it continues to accelerate toward the moon. At 57 hours, uh, 46 minutes, this is Apollo Control. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We're standing by to watch your start up on the PTC at any time. Uh, you can start off at uh, the verb 49. Over. Hi, uh, Wilco. We're just finishing up the... Uh probe and uh, about to close up the hatch here. We're going to be a couple minutes late, probably getting started in the PTC. Watch, no sweat, 11. We're standing by, over. This is Apollo Control. That was Neil Armstrong reporting that they are now uh, reinstalling the probe and drogue, uh, which is uh, just about on the flight plan schedule. And uh, they reported that they would be uh, putting the spacecraft in a slow roll shortly to uh, maintain passive thermal control. In that mode, uh, the spacecraft rotates at a rate of about three revolutions per hour to maintain even heating. We have a precise time on that uh, sphere of influence change, the point at which the moon, for calculation purposes here in mission control, be uh, comes under the predominant influence uh, the spacecraft comes, comes under the predominant influence of the moon's gravitational field. And we now calculate that that uh, event will occur at 61 hours, 39 minutes, 55 seconds ground elapsed time. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Uh, Mike, there's no weight required. Where rates are steady, you can uh, proceed on over. I'm doing it, Charlie. Right. Internals are all secure, the drug, probe, and hatch are all back in. Roger, copy out. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We have some new additions to your alternate and contingency checklist. If you would break that out, over. Stand by. Okay, Houston, let us ready to copy. Uh, Roger, 11. If you'll turn to page F slash 2-22, over. Okay, I have F, F slash 2-22. Roger, Neil. Under column L, that's column Lima, line 06. The new data is 00001, line 07. 
The new data is 02134. Over. Okay, I have an F slash 2 22, column Lima, item 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Item 7, 0, 2, 1, 3, 4. Uh, Roger, that's correct. Thank you much, Al. Eleven Houston, for your information, those two entries are an update to your Delta H that we are have already uplinked into the CMC. Over. All right, thank you. What was I marching on, Charlie? About an 18-kilometer line, or what? Uh, we our update uh, puts you to the Delta H to 35 kilometers, Mike. Over. Okay. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We got some switch positions for you for the high gain, over. Okay, go ahead. Roger, Buzz. Select Bravo, Omni, high gain track to manual, beam wide, over. Okay, Bravo, Omni, track manual, and beam wide. Roger, and your high gain angles are minus 50 on the pitch, 270 on the yaw. Over. Okay, going there now. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We have some updates and some things we'd like to talk to you about if you're in the middle of your meal if it's convenient uh, any time for you uh, we're ready with some updates over uh what uh, what are the updates going to apply to roger we have a couple of changes on the the limb mission rules no go for uh, your no go card meal. One slight change on the uh, aft dip uh, fuel uh, and temp pressure card, and we have a change to the procedure for the secondary radiator leak check, which is to be formed at, performed at 71 hours tomorrow, and also some indications that uh, we have a couple of. Um, Landing site oblique stowed in the wrong place. Over. Okay, if uh, any of those in the flight plan, the secondary radiator, uh, for example? Uh, that's affirmative. The secondary radiator leak check uh, is called out in the flight plan at 7120. Uh, that procedure is uh, listed in your. Uh, Launch operations book. Uh, we on page uh, two dash nine L two dash nine. We'd like to change that procedure over. Okay, uh, stand by. Charlie, on the secondary leak check, just read it verbatim like you want, and I'll copy it directly into the flight plan, and I'll pull around with the checklist. Roger, that's fine. If you're ready to copy, stand by. Ready to copy on the leak check. Roger. It's monitor secondary accumulator quantity. Step two is secondary glycol to radiator valve. Normal for 30 seconds then bypass. If no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, if no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, secondary glycol 
the radiator valve to normal. Next step, secondary coolant loop pump AC1 or AC2. After three minutes, verify glycol discharge secondary pressure 39 to 51 PSIG. Also verify secondary VAP out temp has changed. Next step, secondary coolant loop pump off. Secondary glycol to radiator valve bypass. That ends the procedure over. Okay, I read back. Monitor secondary accumulator quantity. Secondary glycol radiator valve normal for 30 seconds, then the bypass. If no decrease in secondary accumulator quantity, secondary glycol to radiator valve to normal. Secondary coolant loop pump AC1 or 2. After 3 minutes, verify glycol secondary discharge pressure 39 to 51 PSIG. Verify secondary evaporator outlet temp has changed. Secondary coolant loop pump off. Secondary glycol radiator valve to bypass. And what's the reason for the change, Charlie? Roger, Span is concerned that our present procedure shown in the checklist does not really flow a glycol through the radiator. And if they want to verify that we do not have a plugged secondary radiator over. Okay, do they have any uh, abnormal indications in that system so far? Negative. Uh, this is a procedure that uh, came up with. It's just a check, Mike. Oh, everything's looking uh, great to us. Over. Okay, fine. This is Apollo Control at 59 hours, 9 minutes. Uh, Apollo 11 now 182,000 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity down to 3,072 feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, very little conversation from the spacecraft in the past uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, at this time, the uh, flight plan calls for the crew to be uh, getting ready to begin their eat period. Uh, that would be followed by a nine-hour rest period. Uh, we have one change to the flight plan to pass along. The television transmission, which had been scheduled at 100 hours, 20 minutes to 100 hours, 50 minutes, uh, in the flight plan, has been deleted. Uh, this transmission was to have occurred during the formation flying prior, prior to the uh, powered descent to the lunar surface. The uh, decision to delete the TV transmission from the flight plan was made uh, due to uh, a lack of available satellite channels to relay the signal from the tracking site at Madrid to Houston for conversion. The intermittent music that we're getting is apparently coming from the spacecraft. Uh, the crew has on board portable tape recorders with uh, music on the tapes, and as they 
store uh, their own comments on the tape. The music is, of course, erased. Uh, and uh, apparently the music is uh, triggering the uh, Vox-operated microphones, and we're getting intermittent music down from the spacecraft. Uh, 11 Houston, we're wondering who's on horns. Second, yep. We just had a little music there. That was good. You can keep it coming down, 11. Okay. Because it's a special occasion today, uh, Houston, this is the third anniversary of Gemini 10. Roger. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sir. This is Apollo Control. That uh, comment a moment ago about the 10th anniversary of, or about the third anniversary of Gemini 10 came from uh, Mike Collins, who, uh, along with John Young, flew the Gemini 10 mission July 18 uh, through July 21, 1966. The uh, brief bit of music that we got from the spacecraft was coming to us from a distance of 182,000. Uh, 190 nautical miles. Houston, Apollo 11, uh, ready to copy your update. Roger, stand by. Okay, uh, Buzz, the first uh, item is that we have indications that you're uh, landing site obliques are not in the proper position. Uh, if you will check, uh, we think that the intermediate scale landing site oblique is stowed in the CSM Lunar Landmark book. We think that the large scale landing site oblique is stowed in the back of the LIM Lunar Surface Map book. Over. Large 
scale oblique is in the back of the limb lunar surface map book, and that's the reason we think they might be not where you think they are, over. Okay, we've got three obliques, uh, and the last one is one I asked for uh, recently. Is it the blow-up of the second one? The first one is uh, one that's got dotted uh, lines on it in indicating uh, horizon view and 50-degree LPD. And all three of those uh, are in the transfer book, over. Well, Roger, fine. Uh, we were wrong in our in our backup set. Uh, we had those uh, out of place. It looks like the onboard data is good. We just wanted to let you check on that one. We have an update on the aft dips fuel card uh, that you uh, place on the panel. It's a typo error. If uh, you'll break out that little card, uh, we got the correct that typo error over. Am I? Okay, I got it. Roger, Buzz. <laughs> Under the dips column on the pressure side, if you go down to the fourth item, it says pressure greater than 150 PTCA should be greater than 65%. Over. Okay, it's uh, greater than 120 for less than 65 and greater than 150 for greater than 65. That's affirmative, Al. And we have uh, three items on the Mission Rules No-Go card, if you're ready to uh, copy those, over. Okay, I've got the Mission Rules No-Go. Roger, Buzz. At the first entry is under EPS, under AC Bus A, the line extends all the way to High Gate. Uh, actually, uh, the line should read, at DOI, it would be no-go AC bus A. After that, the no-go would be both buses. So if you'll just pencil in both buses from PDI uh, through high gate, uh, it'll be correct for that line, over. Okay, I've got that uh, AC bus A uh, for DOI and uh, both buses no go for uh, PDI on. That's affirmative up until high gate and you can stop at, uh, at the line at under the column five minutes to low gate. Now the next line is under the GNC things, pitch and roll GDAs. You can scratch that line completely over. Roger, got it. Okay, Buzz, last entry is down on the RCS, and it's a typo error it, under the three, in the line, three axis attitude control. If you proceed to the right at PDI plus five, you'll see one axis, the line goes all the way to low gate to touchdown. That's incorrect. The line should stop under five minutes to low gate, over. Okay, we're stopping that at uh, five minutes to locate. That's firm. That completes that card. Uh, the rest of the updates are uh, just really for your information. Uh, based on our 58-hour platform, a look at the platform, uh, we're in really good shape. Your uh, gyros uh, have uh, almost uh, no drift in them. Since the prior to the update, we were looking at X of a minus 2.24. Meru, Y of point, a plus point eight seven, Z of minus point one one. Uh, since the update, uh, which was based on the, the 52 hour uh, P52, I believe, we gave you uh, an X uh, drift of plus point seven nine, Yaw of plus one point zero six, Z of plus point zero two Meru. The 52-hour and the 57-hour uh, alignments were did not really give us enough time to uh, get a real good or completely valid uh, 
uh, update on the drift check. So we're real satisfied with the way the gyros are looking. The Pippas are looking great also. We're in real good shape with those two, over. Radio check. Like to read you 5i, how many over? Okay, last clear. You cut out uh, when you were talking about the platform at uh, something about 52 hours. And, uh, after that, uh, we never heard you again. Uh, Roger, I guess we were changing antennas. Stand by. Uh, that's affirmative 11. We were swapping antennas on you down here. <clears throat> Basically, the word is we got a real good platform. Uh, very small uh, drift in the gyros and uh, very small uh, drift in the pippas, over. Roger, thank you. And I'd like to have a few words of clarification, if you'll give them to me, on the RCS reel, what that um, change essentially means. Uh, copy a few words of clarification on the RCS. Uh, oh, Roger. Uh, the the update there, Neil, you're speaking of about the one axis down to uh, five minutes to low gate. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that uh, real thing beyond five minutes. Uh, stand by. I'll make sure I got my story straight with control. Stand by. Eleven Houston on the RCS. Uh, what we're saying is that uh, if we lose control about one axis prior to low gate, we would recommend an abort. Uh, this would require a dis a loss of of two distinct jets, uh, which is not very probable. But that's what we're recommending. After low gate, we would uh, continue on. Uh, we would recommend that we continue on to attempt the landing, over. Uh, Roger. I think I am. Roger. Hi, uh, Charlie. Did you say you had some updates for us in the uh, lunar surface list? Apollo 11, say again, you were cut out, over. Roger, did you say you had some updates for us in the lunar surface book, over? Negative. Uh, at this time, we do not have any updates for the lunar surface book. Uh, we wanted you to have it just in case, over. Roger, you were cut out that time. Roger, at the present time, we do not have any updates for you on the lunar surface book. We are thinking about some and kicking them around, but they're very minor changes, over. Eleven Houston, did you copy that transmission? Apollo Eleven Houston, we swapped antennas on you again. Uh, I say again that we do not have any uh, lunar surface uh, update book updates at this time. We're considering a few minor ones, but we're still kicking them around the moker over. Apollo Eleven hundred. Houston 11, we have a crew status report for you. Roger, go ahead, 11. Okay, radiation, CDR 11009, CMP 10010, LMP 09011, no medication. Roger, 11, we copy for the uh, radiations. And we're considering, uh, this PC, PC looks sort of weird to us, so we're considering uh, stopping and starting over again. We'll be with you in a couple of minutes, over. Okay. Apollo 11, Houston, would you give us a uh, LIM CM Delta C reading, over? Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We switched the antennas on you again. Would you please give us a LIM CM Delta P reading, over? Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go ahead, 11 here. Roger. We switched antennas on you there. 
moment ago, Neil. Uh, would you please give us a LIM CM Delta P reading over? It's less than point one. Roger. Point one five now, uh, Neil says, John. Roger, thank you, Mike. Uh, could you give us some help? Uh, this PTC is uh, strange. It's not like uh, anything we've seen before, and we're wondering if y'all have had any uh, events or any idea that could help us out on it. No, I didn't understand that. Say again? Uh, Roger, we're looking at a uh, sort of a funny-looking PTC. Uh, we've already drifted out to... Uh, 70 degrees in pitch, and we're wondering if uh, you all have had any events or any such thing as that that could uh, uh, cause us to uh, pick up these rates to drive us off over. All right, negative, Charlie. We don't know of anything. Roger. If it's got something to do with that entry from a stop from the position that we want to be in, I don't know. Uh, Roger, when we started off, it looked uh, real fine to us. Now it's uh, drifting off in a funny pattern that we haven't seen previously on a flight. Uh, we're just trying to figure out, uh, I think we'll probably start it over again. We'll be with you momentarily, over. Okay. Apollo 11, Houston, we hate to say it, but we'd like to terminate this PTC and start over again. We have no assurance that we're going to get it through the sleep period with this uh, uh, funny configuration or funny pattern. We'd like you to stop it uh, now and then uh, go back to pitch 090, y'all zero, and roll whatever you stop on over. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 59 hours, 57 minutes. Uh, a few moments ago, you heard Capcom Charlie Duke advise the crew to terminate the passive thermal control mode that uh, they are presently in and reestablish uh, the three revolution per hour roll rate about the spacecraft longitudinal axis that is used for uh, thermal control. We had noticed a... Uh, uh, unexplained deviation from the attitude that the spacecraft was set up in uh, in this roll mode ideally uh, it would roll about the uh, longitudinal axis with very little wobble and if uh, a wobble is uh, introduced for one reason or another uh, the reaction control system jets would come on uh, as soon as the motion out of the uh, prescribed plane had uh, occurred, had gone beyond uh, prescribed limits, in this case 30 degrees, uh, to correct. Uh, the jet firing is on past missions uh, do tend to disturb the crew's sleep rather than have the uh, reaction control system jets come on during the night and uh, perhaps have to awaken the crew to reestablish the passive thermal control mode at that time. Uh, we elected to correct it now. Men, you disable Bravo and Charlie. Select Quad Alpha and Delta. Over. Apollo 11, Houston. Over. Uh, this is Apollo Control. We're getting quite a bit of noise on the air-to-ground circuit at this time as the spacecraft uh, rotates from one on the antenna around to the next, and we momentarily uh, lose lock-on. Uh, at this time, Apollo 11 is 183,544 nautical miles from Earth. Uh, the velocity uh, holding fairly constant now at about 3,000. 42 feet per second. It's been uh, moving down toward 3,000 feet per second and seems to be leveling off uh, somewhat.
This is Apollo Control. We're going to take the air to ground circuit down temporarily until uh, a stronger antenna lock is a... Here's a call to the crew. We'll stand by for that. Uh, this is Apollo Control. We will take the air to ground circuit down at this time until we have reestablished sufficient signal strength to... Uh, Eliminate the noise on the circuit. This is Apollo Control at uh, 60 hours, 10 minutes. We've uh, reestablished good antenna lock on at this time, and uh, we'll continue to uh, monitor for any conversation from the spacecraft. The crew is presently uh, reestablishing the passive thermal control a rotation rate of three revolutions per hour. Uh, following that, we expect they will uh, begin their rest period. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 183,821 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity 3,037 feet per second. Hello, Apollo 11. Hello, Apollo 11. Over. Bringing about one by. Looks like we picked a super attitude here for PTC stabilization. Uh, we're reading you in uh, a backup voice now. Over. Can we read you loud? Raj. Uh, I think we've got the about the best configuration. Uh, we have been doing it off from the ground here, 11. Uh, we'll just keep it as it is, over. Apollo 11, Houston, would you select Command Reset and Omni Alpha, over. Houston, we is stable. You can start the PTC, over. Well, that's right. Houston, Apollo 11, on checklist page F9-7. I've uh, completed step eight, and uh, I'd like to know what you think is ideal timing between step eight and step nine and step 10 on that page, over. Roger, stand by. Apollo 11, Houston, we don't see any time constraint. We'd like you to go ahead and set up the wide dead band, then go through step 10 and 11, over. Okay, will do. I don't see any constraints either, Charlie. I just was checking to uh, make sure because last time I went from 8 to 9 to 10 to 11 a little bit more swiftly than I've been doing in the past. Roger. Step 11 complete. Roger, we copy. Apollo 11, Houston, would you please select Omni Bravo, over. Roger, Apollo. Houston, Apollo 11, how do you read on Bravo? Roger, reading you 5 I. Same here. Apollo 11, Houston, it looks like we got a good PTC going. It's good night from the white team, over. 
Okay, see you tomorrow. Thank you for everything. This is Apollo Control at 60 hours, 37 minutes. We said goodbye or good night to the crew about uh, 10 minutes ago. We expect that they will be settling down for their rest period shortly. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 184,600 nautical miles from Earth. The spacecraft velocity is presently 3,023 feet per second. Now, we understand there's been some interest in a comment made by Neil Armstrong during the uh, television transmission about the EVA floodlight. Uh, Armstrong's remark was that the mast, uh, which the light is mounted on, appeared charred. Uh, he reported that uh, the light works, but uh, had apparently the mast that uh, supported it had apparently been damaged during the launch phase. Uh, this light would uh, be used in the event of a uh, contingency EVA. It would have no function uh, in a normal mission, such as we're presently flying. And uh, in the event that a, an extravehicular activity was necessary for transfer of the crew from the LEM to the uh, command and service module, the light would be an aid in uh, providing exterior lighting of the handrails, uh, but uh, would repeat that it would have no function uh, in a normal mission. And uh, the charring, which Armstrong reported, is not considered significant at this time. Uh, we don't expect to have any further conversation with the crew. Uh, we will continue uh, uh, to record any, uh, any remarks that we get and uh, play those back. The uh, passive thermal control mode, which was re-established, appears to be uh, functioning well at this time, and all spacecraft systems are functioning normally. At uh, 100, or rather at 60 hours 39 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 60 hours, 47 minutes. Uh, we just got a call from the spacecraft uh, requesting that we give them the position of the S-4B res in respect to uh, the spacecraft. And we're currently coming up with that bit of information, so we'll stand by. Apollo 11, Houston, the S-4B is about 6,000 nautical miles from you now, over. Okay, thank you. Houston Apollo 11, how's the PTC looking? Stand by. 11, Houston, the PTC looks uh, great to us, over. Okay, do you have any idea what happened to the previous one? We have absolutely no idea, over. Okay. Did it look like it was all right, and then just all of a sudden it started uh, diverging? Uh, that's negative. Uh, if you look at the plot, which we'll say for you, and let you see it uh, post-light, it's got it started off immediately on the first rev and uh, just spiraled out to about oh uh, twenty to twenty degrees in pitch, and then uh, it it seemed to be setting up a a spiral around an offset uh, pitch point of about uh, 20 degrees off from uh, 90 degrees, uh, but we didn't want to take a chance that it would uh, would become stable at that point. Uh, we thought it might diverge, so we called you and uh, started over again. Over. Okay, no complaints. I was just curious as to what had happened. This is Apollo Control at 61 hours, 39 minutes. Uh, we've had no further conversation with the crew uh, since our last uh, report. Uh, flight surgeon says there is no indication at this time that they have uh, begun to sleep, but uh, we expect they'll be uh, getting to sleep here shortly. Coming up in uh, less than uh, 10 seconds now, 
we'll be uh, crossing into the sphere of influence of the moon a computational uh, changeover will be made here in mission control at this point as the uh, moon's gravitational force becomes the uh, dominant effect on the spacecraft trajectory and our displays will shift from earth reference to moon reference at that point uh, which occurred a few seconds ago the uh, spacecraft was at a distance of 186,437 nautical miles from Earth and 33,822 nautical miles from the Moon. The velocity uh, with respect to the Earth was 2,990 feet per second and with respect to the Moon about 3,272 3 feet per second. The uh, passive thermal control mode that was set up for the second time by the uh, crew appears to be holding well at this point, and all spacecraft systems are functioning normally. Uh, the mission going very smoothly. At uh, 61 hours, 41 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 62 hours, 29 minutes. The flight surgeon reports that the crew appears to have been asleep now for about the past 30 minutes. The uh, spacecraft appears also to be holding its passive thermal control attitude very well. And at this time Apollo 11 is uh, about 32,000 miles from the moon, traveling at a speed of 3,782 feet per second. In the past 50 minutes or so we've seen that velocity increase about 10 feet per second. Uh, going from 37.72 feet per second to the present 37.82 as the spacecraft continues to accelerate toward the moon. The change of shift briefing following this shift will occur at about 11.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Flight Director Glenn Lunny and his team of flight controllers are coming on now. Uh, being debriefed by the uh, Eugene Kranz team and that uh, shift change will be occurring shortly here. The new capsule communicator will be astronaut Ron Evans. At 62 hours 30 minutes this is Apollo Control.